Welcome to this video in which we will introduce several important concepts associated with computing power in AC circuits, that is circuits that are at AC steady state. Um, we'll begin by looking at voltages and currents in this simple circuit. So I've uh, set up the circuit so that the source voltage is uh, a cosine with period 2, I'm sorry, with frequency 2, and it has a magnitude of 4 volts. And if you uh, do the analysis, you discover then that the current flowing through the circuit, that is through the resistor, the capacitor, and the source, is 1.42 amps um, at the same frequency, but with a um, phase shift of 45 degrees. And what we're interested in is what the power is that is uh, being dissipated by the circuit elements. So we'll look at the power that's being dissipated by the combination of these two guys. Uh, one reason for that is that, or to do this, is it will uh, show us how much power the source is providing in order to make the circuit work. So we know that at any point in time, power is voltage times current, which is what we have here. So if we want to see the power as a time waveform, we take the voltage waveform and multiply it by the current waveform. And I've plotted all three waveforms here. Uh, you'll notice that we have um, the voltage in blue, so this is Vs of t. We have the current in red, so this is Is of t. And we have the power, the instantaneous power, in purple, so this is P of t. And you'll notice that the instantaneous power uh, is not constant. In fact, it goes from a peak of almost 5 watts to uh, valleys of almost negative 1 watts. And it changes 4 times per second. So the instantaneous power is all over the place. Now, it is generally positive, which means if the instantaneous power is positive, that means at that moment, the combination of the resistor and the capacitor are dissipating power, power which is supplied by the source. But occasionally, you'll notice down here, for example, the instantaneous power goes negative, which means that the combination of the resistor and the capacitor are actually supplying power to the source. And in fact, what would actually be happening there is that uh, energy stored by the capacitor is being returned to the source. So the issue th is that the instantaneous power fluctuates with time. And um, typically, we want to look at something that's constant over time. And quite often, when we're looking at power computations, we're not that worried about instantaneous power. We're more worried about average power. So in fact, what we'll do is we'll look at the average power. and. Uh, We'll come up with an expression for it, and then uh, look and see how we can get it from phasers after we've done an AC steady state analysis of a circuit. So that's where we're headed. OK. <coughs> Excuse me. So just to remind you, um, the power dissipated in an element, the instantaneous power, is the voltage times the current, OK? And if we have um, a sinusoidal steady state, then we know that the voltage is going to be some amplitude, which I'll call V sub s, cosine omega t, where omega is the radian frequency, plus theta, where theta is the offset, the <coughs> I'm sorry, the phase offset of the voltage. And then the current we can represent as cosine omega t, because it has the same frequency as the voltage, plus phi, where phi is another phase offset. OK. And um, so what I'll do 
is I'll collect these two guys together. So I can write this as V S I S and then we'll have this cosine times this cosine. And using a trig identity where the product of cosines can be written in the following way, we have the following expression. One half cosine omega t plus theta minus omega t minus phi. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus one half cosine two omega t plus theta plus v. Okay. The idea here is that the there there is a trig identity that says the product of cosines can be written in terms of the sum of the cosine of their arguments of the difference of their arguments plus the cosine of the sum of their arguments, which is what we have here. When we do this, uh, we find that in the first expression, the omega t's cancel. <coughs> so we're left with something that looks like this. 1 half v sub s i sub s cosine theta minus phi plus, and we'll uh, draw this next one in a different color, one-half cosine two omega t plus theta plus v. Okay, whoops, and I left out a v sub s, i sub s here. <coughs> and that should go right there. Okay, well, you'll notice this first term does not depend on time. It's constant no matter what. And the second term is a cosine waveform. And so if I were to take P of t, take this guy here, and average it over a long, long time, I'll call that average P. And since this first term doesn't depend on time, it's just constant. The average of a constant is a constant. So I'll write that down. And the average of a sine wave or a cosine wave, which is positive as much as it is negative, is zero. So what this tells us then is that the average power depends on the voltage and the current magnitude, and it depends on the phase difference between the voltage and the current. Okay, if we go back to our plot, you can, you can see this. You basically can see that the power, this purple graph, as an average value that turns out to be 2. And so that part stays constant and then if you look at the time that it's above 2 and the time that it's below 2, that part averages out. So the average power in this case is 2. Okay. <clears throat> now if we go back to our computation, um, we see then that uh, for this particular case, P is 1 half, V sub S was 4 volts, I sub S was 1 point, whoops, yeah, 1.42 amps. Um, our cosine is a cosine of 0 minus 45 degrees. And when you work this whole thing out, you get, amazingly, that it's 2 watts, which is the same as the power we got by looking at the graph. So this P is 2 watts. I should have put a unit there. 
Okay, so that's average power. Now it turns out that we don't need to average things and we don't necessarily even need to compute this cosine. Um, we can go from uh, from phasors, a phasor representation for voltage and a phasor representation for current directly and get what we call complex power and complex power, as the name suggests, will be a complex number. The real part is the average power. The imaginary part is what's called reactive power. And that turns out to be important. Uh, and we'll talk about why in just a second. So let's clear ourselves some space to work. And suppose we have a, a voltage phasor, which we'll write as a magnitude v sub s at an angle of theta. We have a current phasor, which we'll write as i, which has a magnitude i sub s at an angle of phi. Then the complex power is defined as 1 half times v times i conjugate. Okay, for those of you that haven't looked at uh, complex numbers for a while, I conjugate means that you change the sign of the imaginary part or that you uh, change the sign of the angle. Okay, those are equivalent. So if I plug in um, this expression for V and this expression for I, I get then that the complex power is one half V S I S at an angle of theta minus V. Okay, so we've seen the theta minus V again, or already. We've actually seen the one half V S I S. Uh, when we computed the average power, that's what we had. So the real part of this which is the average power, <coughs> excuse me, will be one half V S I S cosine theta minus phi, which we've already found. The reactive power, which again is the imaginary part of S, will be one half V S I S sine theta minus phi. So we can basically say then that S is P plus JQ. We found the real part and the imaginary part. The units for the average power is watts. The units for the reactive power is what we call volt amps reactive or VAR. Okay. Now in reality this expression has the same units as this expression but it turns out they mean something different. The average power is actual power that's dissipated. That shows up as heat or energy or rotational energy or something. So it's we, we talk about it in watts the reactive power is basically power that is shuffled amongst the sources and the inductors and capacitors without ever being dissipated. And the fact that we have reactive power can um, cause some interesting issues when we're dealing with uh, power delivery. Okay, so that pretty much um, sums it up. The last thing that I'd like to do is if we look at the circuit that we had previously, uh, we can write V, that is the voltage, as 4 volts at an angle of 0. We can write the current as 1.42 amps at an angle of 45 degrees. So that means 
that the complex power, S, is going to be 4 volts times 1.42 amps, and I left out a 1 half in front, at an angle of minus 45 degrees. Okay, that minus 45 comes from conjugating this guy. And when I work that out, I get that this is 2 watts minus J2 vars, okay, which is what we got before. Our real power, the actual power dissipated in the circuit is 2 watts, and then I have 2 var, which are being, it's basically that's energy that's being traded between the source and the capacitor. So I'm already over time. We'll stop with this at this point. Thanks for watching.